WGI 2023 is in the books. That was a hell of a weekend, and a lot of crazy shit happened. Dude, and it was cold. But yeah, thankfully, that was awful. Thankfully, it was dry Saturday. Yes, we were, because leading up to the weekend, you, you and I were checking the weather every day. Earlier in the week, it had rain both days, and... It looked like it was going to suck. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a terrible... We're like, oh, no one's going to get good lot videos any day, like... The lot's not going to happen. The stupid tent situation. Like, it's good they can do that and they have the rain plans in place with those tents at the top of the ramp, but it still sucks. It's not fun. And the irony of guard finals having beautiful weather all Ugh. weekend when they don't need outside warm-ups and they don't, don't do it. at all. <laughs> but I was like, no. Yeah. But it was it ended up being great. I mean, they had some of the, some of the delays on Saturday or Friday, I mean. Uh, which we'll get into, and some groups had to deal with some some bull crap and some waiting to to perform and going back out to warm up and this and that. But it, everybody handled it like a champ. It seemed like it went pretty smoothly and picked back up pretty quickly. But yeah, it was a great weekend. Yeah, super fun. But so before we get into this, welcome everyone to the Aged Out Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Mike Fantini, and with me as always is Evan Wall. And go check out Facebook, Instagram, never miss an update on the podcast, reaction videos, clips that we put up, all that stuff. It's all posted there. We'll post random like uh, schedule stuff. We just post all kinds of stuff. Just go follow on those social media platforms. If you use them, hit subscribe, comment, like on the YouTube channel. If you're, if you're watching slash listening there, uh, hit the join button, become a member for 99 cents a month. Uh, it helps us pay for travel costs and stuff. Obviously, we just hotels, travel, all that stuff. Um, we appreciate all that. But at the end of the day, we just appreciate the viewership. It still blows our mind how many people have started, like found out about this thing, this like pet project and started listening and interacting with us and stuff. It's super fun. So we appreciate everything. And uh, after that, let's jump right in. Like, let's just do... Let's start. Let's like go over our weekend and what we what we saw on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, our game plan, kind of, and just overall thoughts, and then we'll get into basically we have like how our predictions turned out. You know, we're gonna go over recaps towards the end of the episode, and um, yeah, so some interesting things in there. Yeah, stay yeah, tuned. we yeah, stay tuned. Some <laughs> I, I said it at the beginning. Some wild shit happened. <laughs> uh, if you if you really if you really dig into the recap and look at the different panels, but we'll get into that later. So Thursday we weren't there yet. We were not there on prelims day. Uh, we were both watching the flow stream. We watched yep. you watched everybody or the a lot of them, right? I I I'm trying to think of who I missed. I pretty much caught everybody. I don't I don't remember missing because the great thing was you could kind of scroll back and back up yep. and go back and watch shows. There was some um, stuttering though. Like when yeah. you went back far enough, it would like jump around like with buffering. It it kind of sucked, but um, I'll take it. But yeah. yeah, I did. I'm pretty sure I caught every single group. I can't think of it. Like as I went back through the list, I I couldn't think of a show that I didn't see. So yeah, I watched the first two blocks, and then probably half of the groups, the the higher placing groups or the groups that I thought would place higher. I had like a family gathering and had to like I missed a lot of stuff in the middle, but uh, I caught a bunch of that. And then we just woke up and we met at my sister's house in Cincinnati, uh, left my car there, hopped in the car with Evan and we went up to Dayton and we were in the lot by like 1245 going on one o'clock, something like that. Yeah. Thankfully the rain day, kind the rain delay kind of hooked us up uh, because traffic was running us behind. Um, But we were able to get in there and catch lots. Um, I know like dark sky. I'm trying to think of who else was in there. Semis there. Um, we watched a lot of groups. Actually, we watched a lot series. of groups. Connexus. Um, yep. Monarch. We watched watched a lot Red of Monarch. Wave. We saw Red Wave. Red um, Wave. Infinity Two. Yeah, just pretty much all the way up. Um, all the way up until really, I think that it started to really rain, and then yeah. we went inside because we did have tickets. And yeah, we, we were went able inside, to connect. And we watched two groups Connexus inside. And Monarch. Yeah, we we caught Connexus and Monarch uh, inside on Friday, and I gotta say, like just want to start by like kudos to Connexus because the show was cool. And I thought I, I dug the show before I even got there, but obviously we've said it before. There's been groups in past years that we've been talking about and covering this stuff. Shows hit different in person. It's pretty obvious why you feel the energy on the floor. The music has energy to it itself, as we all know, as musicians and stuff like that. Uh, it's a whole different level of engagement as an audience member. And the shows just kind of hit different 
for lack right. of a better way to put it. Connexus is definitely, I already liked it going in, hit different in person, knew it immediately on Saturday, like within the first 60 seconds of the show. Um, and then Monarch yeah. too. Monarch, it, it, it was pretty cool, like dichotomy or juxtaposition rather between Monarch and Connexus. Like Connexus, you had tool music, just kind of like electric guitar. And then Monarch was more of like a subdued kind of undertone show that had peaks and valleys and just very, right. very different shows. Just very, very controlled, I would yeah. say. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to do our predictions rant here in a minute too, but we were able yeah. to see them. Unfortunately, they hit like another weather delay. Um, so after we saw Monarch, we ended up just going back to the hotel to check in. And then we went to lunch. We had a reservation with a bunch of our Rhythm X friends and uh, just other friends that were in town at Thai Nine, which was fantastic. Phenomenal. So, um, yeah, and then we just went and hung out for the rest of the evening. Uh, Saturday morning, woke up. We had a lot of time to kill, so we were like, let's go check out some PIO lots. Yep. Um, we hit the brunch spot. We went to the lot, checked out PIO, uh, where... I think Mike. I think one of the first things you said we were watching the first group, and you're like, well, "This class is a lot different than it was ten years ago." Because so so Evan marched open class. I marched open class. You did three seasons. I only did one in open class. All at Tate's Creek yeah. Indoor out of Lexington, Kentucky. And all I'm saying is, the year I marched in 2010, we got fourth, and we would have gotten like 17th. If that same group and show and ensemble was, and that's not to knock us, it was just the state of the activity back then. Like the, like we've talked about on here before, the average of all classes really, with more resources online, kids are getting into the activity younger, educational tools, all that stuff is just doing nothing but progress. Yeah, I think it's it's dude, open class is so much better than it used to be. We were just getting like our kick to our teeth kicked in and open and i think the first year we had five snares the next year we had six next year we had five like a lot of times the ensembles were much smaller now they're eight nine they're like full eight, size four, world five, class size five, five six five four or five symbols some of them have vision ensembles like they're they're full size massive groups yeah so um, we saw in terms of open class in the lot at least we saw uh q2 we saw freedom we saw civitas we watched impact a little bit and I feel like there was another group we watched. We saw um, Spartans Indoor. Yes, that's who I'm um, forgetting. Andy Kim. We saw the the May Rocky group a little bit from over mm -hmm. the side. Um, i trying to remember if there's more. Mm. I think that was it. We kind of got there a little later because we really didn't know what else to do during the day. Uh, and then we went inside and watched through Bakersfield College, which is like the last six, I the think, top open six, class yeah. groups. Yeah. And it's good stuff. Like I uh, – Q2 did the Andy Warhol show, right? Yeah, yeah, that was a fun show. It was really cool. Dude, it was very, with that very eight, fun. The eight bass drums, like the top, yeah. top one was like super tiny. Oh, I don't dude, even know. It was, it was like, like a, a modified tom. tom drum. Just a little tom turned sideways. It was hilarious. But the it was so reacted. funny. And yeah, they, the dude, crowd, they played it. Yes. They ripped it. Yeah, the crowd reacted to it, which was really cool. Um, uh, it's just, I almost, who, I like, I feel like Meraki won, right? They won open, right? Yeah, yeah, they won. They had that uh, Euphoria show with like mm. a lot of the strings and colored strings. Super well designed, put together yep. show. They played really well. I thought that they played the best, um, but I'd then I looked back that. and I did see that Freedom won the music caption. So awesome. Good for them. Um, Shout out that, Mike Davis. Good job. That Impact group that I believe is from Washington had that awesome show. I think it was like Hidden in Plain Sight where they used the, the color scheme on the props really clever. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously at the end, they kind of formed the words Hidden, which was had been there the yeah. whole time, but you didn't see it. That was, very, that was really cool. Catchy. Some, some um, cool stuff going on in open. Yeah. Highly recommend. We will be doing a reaction video uh, to a handful of the open groups. Like la I think last year we did the medalists all in one video. We might do more than just the medalists this year and do like break it into like two videos or something. But uh, we'll get to that later after this uh, wrap up podcast here. But so open class was super fun. Uh, after that, we went back to the hotel, took a nap, and then came back and watched some Scholastic World, which we found that. We went to that dope cocktail bar with Dean and Casey. Oh, yeah. But, Tender Mercy. Uh, highly Tender. recommend in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. Uh, um, but... Yeah, went back. Scholastic PSW. World was fun as always. We went straight inside. We were in the lot for like five minutes, and we're like, it's too cold. I'm not doing this. Um, yeah. 
basically it was we're like super windy Whew. yeah very windy cold so we said let's just go inside let's watch everything on the floor get a really good read and take on it all and uh it did not disappoint like the top of scholastic world never does um you had avon you had dartmouth you had um chino vista hills marietta. ayala vista marietta those were the five we watched center right? grove we, yeah. we missed center grove we didn't get in time we were sitting there watching it from like the the tunnel they wouldn't mm-hmm. let us in <laughs> yeah so dartmouth was the first one we saw and everybody knows that drum set player is phenomenal just killed it in unbelievable obviously just ripping it super killer drum set killer talented just performing his heart out just incredible and i think also dartmouth is a consistent staple that you can take a show concept that might not be super abstract or yeah. just overly heady and intellectual and just nuance the hell out of it and make it super fun, super energetic, and be excellent at it. And, and so this year's Dartmouth show, and anyone that knows, correct me in the comments, but it struck me as it might have been in terms of the battery, a little bit of a younger group. They looked younger, like younger high school kids across the board, or on average at least. And it just shows like Tom just flex his muscle and ability to read the ability of his group going into the season, write some write content that's achievable yet still effective and will compete well. Cause I will say it was one of the more, it was a little sparser of a Dartmouth battery book in terms of the content, like vocabulary, what they were playing, but it worked well. They played well. They got to experience and learn what it sounds like to play clean. And I guarantee they're going to be, I bet if I'm right in my assumption, they're younger this year a little bit, they're going to be really good next year. This might be one of those. They had a big graduating class last year. Um, I think they ended up dropping a spot to sixth, right? Yeah. Center Grove uh, passed them. And honestly, from the tunnel, even Center Grove sounded pretty good. So good for them. Um, But yeah, they were good. They were great. Just, show produced to the nines and then after them we watched who went forth was it vista marietta uh, vista marietta uh, yeah, mike, mike jackson, jackson high school group yep it's it's unreal how he gets the high school kids like that to do something similar to what broken city does uh, you can definitely tell us that same kind of a desi- design approach and it's like you and i've said it before here too it's super cool to watch high school kids achieve at a high level and the fact that they get a high school to do shows and play and handle space like that, similar to, to what broken city attempts and achieves to different degrees each year is amazing. Super cool. Just mad respect. Yep. Very good. I think and they then, won the visual caption. If I remember looking at the recap, right? I would um, believe that. And, and then, then so Avon Avon. Yeah. I hate to say this because I don't like doing more than just praising because high school kids, they're high school kids. We don't, I don't like to get super overly analytical about it. It's just really highlight the excellence is kind of the goal. Um, But I don't think Avon had their best run finals night from a play, from a clarity standpoint. Dude, they had had an extremely challenging book too. Oh God. It was Uh, was the hardest book. Especially the snare lines. It was was definitely the hardest. I will say they had the hardest, the the highest level of difficulty Um, in their book. It was a lot of risk, which, you know, great risk, great reward. Yep. If you nail it, you nail it. Um, there's a couple moments that just didn't quite, quite pop off. But, yep. it, dude, I love seeing people go for that, though. Oh, yeah. In the risk factor, just, like, this is indoor percussion. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to push the envelope. We're supposed to take risk. We're supposed to push our kids, like, can you do this? Let's see. Yeah, we'll um, find out. So, And yeah. the, I thought their battery they had a lot i saw a lot of the same faces in this year's drum line for them that i saw on the floor last year and uh i think avon's gonna be here to stay in terms of the staff seems to have had two really well-designed competitive shows two years in a row now um i just think they're gonna be at the top of scholastic world here for a little bit so i'm excited to see what they do next year and after that, it was Ayala went next because Chino Hills uh, was in first. Yeah, Chino was in finals. first. Ayala went next with their show. I think it was called Past to the Future, like P A S S E D, if I remember right. Uh, I don't remember. And of course, just 
in true form. I did not look it up before this. Uh, but um, I Ayala ended up winning, which I feel like it was deserved. Um, the the visual package of Ayala's show, just like the body, the stuff they did. Like I I, I leaned over and was like, oh, it's the Naruto run <laughs> at one point. Uh, <laughs> but they did it well. It was uniform, was super cool, like sliding across the floor into certain positions, and like it's just the integration of clean. the props, the way they utilize the props. Man, the performance level from those kids was just, I don't know. It was very, very special that night. And they they probably, they may have had my favorite or just most impactful show that I saw all weekend. It's um, up there for me, for sure. I'll have to revisit that when we get back to the end. But it was just, it's it was It's definitely so up there. I'm going to find some lot videos and stuff um, to check out again. Dude, their nasty. quad line, best quad line in Scholastic World. Those three kids can drum one of them made bd for this coming summer right uh, yeah i'm pretty sure yeah. but just overall all three of them like the sound quality that they play with was just so mature um the velocity in the in the hands just it's crazy fantastic. crazy crazy and then of course chino hills went on last and on finals day because they were in first after semis it's what you expect greatness it's just clarity clarity you you never think you're gonna see out of high school kids and I would say Ayala was on that level too, in terms of clarity. And um, did Chino Hills? I don't. I don't know if you have this in front of you. Did they win music or did Ayala win music finals night? Uh, I'm pretty sure Ayala won finals night okay. music. I looked at it earlier today, but I don't remember. So if I'm wrong, eh, whatever. whatever. But I'm pretty uh, sure that I'm pretty sure they won every caption except visual okay. performance. Well, I, Chino Hills was great. Scholastic World's gotten so good. Just. Groups just keep pushing the envelope of what you you don't think high school kids can do, and it just gets crazier and crazier every season. It's nuts. Oh, before I forget about this, another high school, prelims day, uh, we made sure we watched Dartmouth uh, on the prelim stream. Sparkman High School went right after them, and I had to watch like a replay or like rewind later because of work when they went on, and you were like, hey, watch Sparkman right after. These yeah. kids could play. Yeah, really good show. And we yeah. actually got to meet some of those kids yeah. in uh, the PIO lots, which yep. was cool. Um, they came up and introduced themselves. And for everyone that we talked to throughout the weekend, it was just awesome to meet people. I know we met some of the crew from uh, UMass and some folks from all over. Uh, Calvin down at 5 is one Base, who runs that account. Obviously, we ran back into Robert. I don't think I saw George all weekend, though. I did not um, see George anywhere. I don't know where he was running around. Definitely saw Robert in the Conexa slot. George was uh, hiding um, in plain sight. hey yeah. uh, But yeah, so after that, let's jump into some ind independent world stuff. But we'll start with how our predictions panned out. But <laughs> what I want to yeah. say is... I do have a rant. When we posted these, we got people asking and questioning, like, how many of these groups have you seen? Have you ever... And we said, too, during the predictions podcast, like, I haven't seen much from this group, so... I have a tirade. I think I replied to one person, zero. <laughs> yeah. I have a tirade about that. It is 2023. Every single independent world ensemble, and probably a lot of this, a lot of the independent open groups that are competitive, have your own YouTube channel. What are you doing? Everybody has one of these things in their pocket, an iPhone, for those podcast listeners that can't see my hand. The cameras on them are insane. Have one of your like four snare techs in those independent world groups. Pull your phone out. Record some lot videos. Take some rehearsal footage. Take some do do some design team breakdowns of what your show is. Talk to us as an audience on YouTube. And I guarantee most groups have enough alumni. You're gonna get monetized pretty quickly. It's not gonna take you two and a half years like it did us with this passion project. X has a YouTube channel already. Pulse has one. I've seen United do a few things recently, but it's simple. Film some lot videos. A lot of you have admin interns. Have them do it. Have one of your five techs do it. It's super simple, and if you should be advertising yourself. Credit to Atlanta Quest. They had media teams at all their lots. When the Atlanta Quest was pushing their stuff out on the floor finals night... And there's this dude with a nice high quality camera getting footage out on the floor as they're setting up for their finals run. Can they're gonna, I guarantee they're going to put a hell of a video together 
a promotional video and put that shit on YouTube. Oh, yeah. And it makes sense. I mean, you can control your own narrative. You can put out what's good and what you can not put out what's not good. You can yep. get your show concept out there. I think that that would be great, like seeing more people digest like this is our show this is how we came up with it this is what it means this is what we're trying to tell i mean i think it would help me as a viewer just understand shows better um in my rant on the prediction thing is i feel like there's this weird misconception that when we rank group somewhere people think that we don't like what they're doing or think that they're bad which is not anywhere close to what it is or how we feel i mean when a group finishes well like i'm happy for that group even I'm if, happy that they, even finished, if they well. finished six places higher or ten places or five places lower, if, if a group does something cool, good for them. It's Celebrate. not like I'm happy that no. so-and-so did bad or they beat someone else. We always compare this to filling out NCAA brackets. Yep. Like, I've never seen Abilene Christian or Farley Dickinson play basketball. I'm going to go out uh, on a limb and say nobody person. had um, until that tournament. But that's but people still love filling out brackets, yeah. and that's kind of why we do the predictions. It's fun. It's all like just we love this activity. We love to just throw it out there. Um, I told you maybe next year we find a way to create a bracket pool where people can fill out their own predictions, and then we reward certain like, oh, if you predict these groups correctly, obviously it would be anonymous for the people that submit them. But um, then figure out a way to calculate the points. Uh, set up a tiebreaker if there is a tie like whoever guesses closest to the correct uh highest winning score and then we like send out somebody like a gift card to a pad company or a music online music store or something i'd be thinking that'd be fun um so i mean we're over here trying to be as objective as we possible while, yeah. while clearly realizing that we have our own bias but as we get into later, I think everybody's going to realize even the judges have bias, yeah. this which activity, is very clear from the recap. This activity um, is subjective. Evan right. and I were talking to, I even forget who we were, I mean, Chris Gary. This is subjective music art competitive activity. This is not a basketball game where, oh, team A put the ball in the hoop more times than team B. Clearly, they won the game. And we'll show... We have breakdowns we're going to pull up here in a minute. Yeah. Prelims panel versus the different semis and finals panel. There's some stuff that's wild how different yeah. the panels were on stuff. It's so all I'm, on reads. Even judges yeah. ha have a little bit of a bias based on their educational background, their marching experience, the instrument that was their primary percussion, whether they're marimba player, snare drummer, bass drummer. It is impossible to get that out of your, your upbringing. Like it, yeah. it's part of your, how your ears are wired, how your brain looks at the activity and they're very good at blocking that out. But the reality is nobody knows everything and nobody hears everything. Like, I'm not surprised when people don't agree with us because yeah. honestly, we, seen like, everything. we shouldn't always agree. No. Uh, and the judges don't agree with themselves. Even literally some judges didn't agree with themselves from night to night, night to night. Um, and if the panels, it, it's kind of interesting because if the panels that judged had been just rearranged a little differently, Rhythm X would have won or RCC would have won. Yep. Uh, so like it was, it was pretty close. Like the spreads at the end, I don't think are quite indicative of how close it actually was. Um, I think I looked up that Rhythm X won five captions over the course of the weekend. Yep. Pulse won five captions. And RCC won four captions over the course of the weekend. So th I know that adds up to 14, but there was a couple ties just due to like the way the prelims worked out with different rounds. But yeah. So, so. so the reality is who, who the judging panel is year to year is going to help certain groups by default to some extent it based on the experience and past of the judges on that panel. It's because just, everybody's going to view a show in a different way. Yep. So. We were sitting but, we were sitting five rows literally directly behind Giff Howarth finals night. Oh yeah, we, we got we, we basically hear everything. the same read he did, and I guarantee his ears picked up things that ours didn't, and we might have heard little things he didn't. Because it, there's so much going on on an indoor drumline floor during a show. So many different textures, musical instruments, and the goal is to try to take the whole thing in, but the reality is you're gonna look here instead of here right or left when you should have been looking right and miss this one night and hear this the next night. It's, it's, it is what it is. 
It's there's, it, it's not Team A put ball in hoop more than Team B. It's just not. It's subjective. And right. with that, we'll end that rant, and we will yep. dive into our predictions list um, and go through that, and as well as just where everything finished. Yep, let me switch us um, over. We have more spreadsheets because we're nerds. Uh, oh, I'll post see. all these spreadsheets later. Yeah. yeah. There'll be I, places to see them. I went hard in the paint on those spreadsheets. Uh, let me share my um, screen. With also, you. shout out to Team Ohio, who got four groups and finals, which was yep. pretty sick. Hmm. Can you see my screen on your end? Have you pulled it up? I can. Yeah. All right, cool. We are good. You're not seeing our logo anymore. It's transitioned back. So, so um, yeah. just like I said before in our predictions podcast, the one prediction I did get right, or one of them, <laughs> is we got at least half of our predictions wrong. <laughs> Probably. Definitely more than half completely wrong. Uh, the way I color-coded it was if we guessed the exact placement or guessed one off from where they finished, I counted it as like kind of a win. Yeah. Um, We're going to give ourselves gr- a little leeway. But yeah, those are the, the ones that we nailed do feel good. It does <laughs> feel kind of good. Those are the green boxes, the one that we nailed or we got one off. If yep. we were two placements off, I counted it as blue. And then obviously there's a lot of white boxes that we just flat out missed. Yeah. So, so basically what you're looking at is column C here, Evan's predictions. E is mine. G is what actually happened. Finals night. Well, obviously 16 through 20 is what happened. Semis night. Below that is what prelims. You get the idea. On the right, Evan pointed out, because we looked at this stuff, uh, if you just look at just the music score on prelims night, we were a lot more accurate in our predictions. Which, which is makes not sense. super surprising because we kind of biasly lean towards like playing. Just like, the clarity. We're, yeah. we're talking about who's playing cleaner, who's playing harder, tougher battery stuff. You know, We're getting better at looking at front ensemble content and clarity and achievement. So it made sense that our music, the, the music scores on prelims when everyone went in order – lined up a little more we still got stuff wrong so let's start let's yeah. start at the pre the prelims groups oh yeah we got um, a ton wrong um obviously yeah, shout tons. out one thing that jumps off the page is i2 who uh ended oh, yeah. up being i think 16th yep. um got pre- reclassified this year into world class was super successful we saw them drumming in the lot um very solid playing just solid fundamentals uh obviously really good teaching and reception to the feedback going on there um yeah I was going to take that opportunity, you bringing that up. If I2 is not a, a big green sign telling every group, stop trying to do too much. <laughs> I2 was designed as an open class show. They got promoted and they got 16th freaking place. But their book was easier. Their appro- Their exercises were easier. Uh, did they have seven snares or eight snares? It was eight, right? I believe they had eight. Okay. Ever since RCC won with seven, why is everybody insisting on like, oh, we have to go nine? Dude, you finished 23rd last year. Go seven and be cleaner. <laughs> or 10. Like, you got to have a unique situation to go 10. And honestly, if you're not one of those year after year finishing top 10 top top eight groups go eight josh bricky yeah. says eight is great seven is heaven there it is like and i think that that same sentiment like extends to the other sections as well yes um, four quads. although it did seem like it was year of the year of six bass drums so but. is that becoming the norm <laughs> bass techs or maybe bass drummers, visual like, people just really like that too for the way it sets up drill but who knows so. who knows but, but the reality is if you want to be as competitive as possible you know, I already mentioned RCC won with seven snares. I, too, I took like 10. Take, just take 10% off the top. Take 10% off your battery book. Be cleaner. Don't. I, I know you want to make investments for the future, but if you think you have a solid ensemble that season, just find another spot in the ensemble for that last snare drummer or send them to a different group that you, you know people at. Something. Competitively speaking... I, too, should be the biggest example to everyone. Take 10, 15% off the top, for lack right. of a better way to put it. Also, uh, one thing to note here, uh, Thesis was in 22nd overall, yes. but they had a penalty, I heard, due to a prop malfunction or breaking. Yeah. And without that penalty, they would have been in 19th place and That's... been in semifinals. 
it's the uh, worst which is way. a pretty heartbreaker. But yeah. um, shout out to Thesis for for I think this is our first year in World yep. and putting together a semifinals caliber show and performance. Also, just what they improved from a design standpoint and a playing standpoint from year one to year two was crazy, pretty incredible, crazy, um, a pretty huge leap for them. I, I'm definitely a group to keep your eye out for moving forward as far as just improving. And I also found out that since they would have been nineteenth, that means that there would have been a tie. Yeah, this is for twentieth between Dark dumb. Sky and Red Wave. And I assumed like, oh, there would have been if there was a tie, they would have just taken twenty one groups in the semis. Well, no. Nope. Apparently the setup is that before prelims ever start, groups draw numbers. And if there is an event of a tie that eliminates a group, the group who pre drew the higher number gets in. And I thought that that was like I was like, Man, that rule has to change. Like that is dumb. Either one, they should just take both groups. Because yep. there's more than enough time. I that mean, I think we it. saw with the rain delay that they can make it happen. They can just change the schedule there's not something else going on at the arena in the middle of the day or if there's a tiebreaker uh, or if there's a tie make the tiebreaker the group that scored higher in music because it's a music caption and that is a caption that kind of reflects the playing and the ability and the execution of the performers it's not like a quote-unquote design caption so like i feel like that's a rule that has to change like why are we drawing numbers just make a tiebreaker who had the higher music box yeah or I really just like take 21 into finals that year or semifinals. Yeah. Like, just do that. It isn't that big of a deal. Like, I don't it's, know. It's like, dumb imagine to have if a you, coin flip. Imagine if you tied for 15th going in for finals. Maybe that's different. Maybe. But imagine if you tied for 15th and like, well, you, you drew a lower number. You so drew a lower you number. So your, your kids aren't going to finals. Like, there would be fist fights. That's heartbreaking. Staffs would be like barging down the, the door to the judging communities, like their room, the hospitality room and stuff. It's just stu- it's stupid. Yeah. Um, Propose right. that in June. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. All right. So <laughs> in going. terms of the actual predictions, um, we got the one thing we did get pretty right is who was not going to make semis, who was not going to make finals. Our ordering, and we kind of talked about this a little bit in the predictions podcast, the order we had them in wasn't correct, but where the general area in the rankings we had most groups was pretty close. Super off few, on MBI. There were a few um, hard misses. Um, yeah, super I had off gold on Red pretty Wave. Right. I, had, I was one off on gold. Evan had gold really wrong. Uh, we both had I2 uh, really pretty wrong. wrong. MBI, but again, MBI, there was nothing on the internet. <laughs> Yeah, what are we put supposed more to do content. with that? <laughs> have your have your quad tech take a, a video, put it on YouTube, like um, like a show video. <laughs> we got uh, Red Wave, I think, pretty wrong. Uh, yeah. yeah, we both had Red Wave pretty wrong. They were like five places higher. Um, we already talked gold flux. I had flux really wrong. Um, the last five group red line was a big miss. Yeah. Thesis actually would have been pretty close without the penalty. Um, they would have been in semis, and we both had yeah. them in semis. So I would have nope. had them two off. but Yeah, uh, I was would have been three off. But either way, Red Line was a big miss, but Red Line was another one of those. There wasn't a lot of stuff from later in the season. There was some really early stuff, but even the video quality wasn't great. Like the show wasn't done. The show wasn't done. So what, what do we do with that? I yeah. went off the group's history, the one or two old videos. Uh, we we got Dark Sky moving up into semifinals. We nailed Blue Knights, so that was cool. Uh, we nailed Blue Knights. Um, I think that was the only one we actually. You know, we got. Was there? Uh, there was one up higher that we <laughs> we got completely right. Cap City, we got yeah, right. Yeah, well, we'll get into finals um, in a minute, but. Um, Blue Knights, we pretty much hit the nail on the head. That might have been dumb luck. A blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. You know, one of those things. Uh, the old broken clock analogy. But it's it's just put your own stuff out, please. <laughs> Obviously, selfishly, we're asking, please. But you can make money for the ensemble off of it. And, like, it's yeah. advertising and recruiting for future seasons. Pay so for an equipment truck. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, NBI, big miss. Top of the big miss is there. Let's get into finals and how that kind of p- played out. So, first things first, neither you or I had Conexus in finals. And pretty big miss. You know, they were in 12th, I think, after prelims. Is that what it was? I uh, have the... Oh, uh, let's see here. 
I don't. Uh, you'd have to go to the other spreadsheet, and I'll tell you what they were in. But in semis, I know that they finished. Let's see, twelfth. Okay, so. so we I had them in 17, you had them in 16. I will say in our defense, if you go listen to the previous podcasts before finals, we both said they were in that group of like five or six groups on the bubble. Yeah, I'm of, sure that there's they people made that it just... In, we I'm sure there's people surprised. that only look at the, the picture and don't actually listen to the podcast, but that's fine. I know of one person right now that I know didn't listen and definitely <laughs> just looked at the spreadsheet, but I will oh, not... Oh, yeah, for sure. I will not call them out. Um, nah, so... Nah. Conexus was a miss on getting into finals. Uh, Dark Sky, you and I were higher on Dark Sky than... Um, I don't know if they didn't play super well uh, or what it was, but they they made semis. Um, not, not 19th tied with, uh, with Red Wave there, so barely made it into semis. I don't really know. I didn't get a chance to see their show on the floor. Um that was a big miss in terms of who was going to make finals. We did get we got Cap City, one hundred percent right. Um, As we do this, do you want to just talk about the shows a little bit? Yeah, we can do that. Um, let's start uh, Vigilantes, I guess, because they were fifteenth at the end. So yeah, they ha- yeah, go they ahead. had a massive penalty. I think they actually would have been in fourteenth without the penalty. Uh, um, I think but so. Yeah, I completely one hundred percent support what they did. I mean, they made sure they got the sound working. Yep. Um, they're having issues with the electronics, but at that point, you're in finals. You the worst you can get is 15th. They were all, were already in 14th. Oh, we so, dropped one spot. Let's take the. I think they took like five, six, seven minutes to get it figured out. Like it was a long time. Would have completely done the exact same thing. I mean, yeah. get everything working. Have a great run. It's the yep. last one. Make it a good one. So and like credit to those members it. because, yeah. uh, and we'll get into this when we look at the recaps, but. Omar had them in ninth in music, despite them standing there pseudo awkwardly as their staff yep. figured out the sound issues. They Able still to stay loose. I thought they played really well. The clarity was there. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll see where GIF uh, had them, but Omar, I know that stood out to me when I was looking at the recap. Omar had them in ninth, and it just credit to them for keeping their calm, enjoying the moment, rising to the occasion, dealing with the adversity, and still having a hell of a playing run. And so their show, I, it's it's still even in person, kind of came off as drums in the gym. It seemed yeah, like a step in the right direction still yeah. compared to last year. More body happening, more of an indoor show. Um, but I like what they do. I like the way they play. The drums sound good. It's similar to what Rennick, look and feel of Rennick lines. Uh, right. I'm a fan. Have been a fan since last year, really. and prob- <laughs> And will continue to be a fan. Uh, but yeah, Cap City, I think their show hurt them a lot in terms of Yeah. Like I did say like I did say on the other um predictions podcast, I think that there was something to be said about groups who consistently make finals and know what it takes to make finals. Mm-hmm. They made a pretty I I would say r- very recognizable many changes that I saw like with the drill with the music with the staging yeah even with like the props and the way that they had them colored and the borders on the props and things like that so i think that they made a bunch of really smart uh adjustments to the show that ultimately helped them stay into finals um and not drop drop out yep so kudos to them for you know doing what they had to do making the changements changes and getting better. I thought they had a pretty solid finals run. If I'm being yeah, honest. I think uh, somebody from, from a playing standpoint, I thought they played pretty. <laughs> there were some moments that really popped, and it was good. Yeah, I think somebody that was sitting around us or w- with one of our friend groups was like, "That's a 15th place group." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like in a good way. Like yeah, okay. in, in a positive <laughs> note. Just yeah. fr- further proof that the average of the activity just continues to get better. Um, so yeah. Again, we got – I had – starting in terms of predictions, I had Vigilantes in 11th. You said 13th. Um, I will find – I do find it funny that if you look at – I think Vigilantes ended up 12th in music overall, finals night. So we split the difference there if I'm right about that when we go look at the recaps here in a few. Uh, do you have it in front of you? Here. What uh, was their music? They were 13th in music overall, Vigilantes. So, but, Yeah. And also, without the penalty, they would have been 14th. But yeah, so it is, yeah. there's that. I again, counted it as is. Yep. Again, we had Cap City right across the board. 13th, again, you had Vigilantes. I had Atlanta Quest. Uh, Atlanta Quest technically finished 13th. 
so I didn't actually, without Conexus's uh, penalty, get that right. Because uh, Conexus also had a timing penalty, right? Uh, I'm not sure what it was for, but they had a penalty. They I had mean, a penalty. I'm sure, so I'm assuming it was time because it was hefty, one point. But yeah, if you if you take the penalty away from Conexus, they actually got 11th. They jumped yep. POW after semis. So again, credit to them, and that means I got Atlanta Quest 100% correct. And speaking of Atlanta Quest, no, 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 you can't count it like that. We're going, we're going off no, no, of no, no, what no, what no, happened. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm not we'll, we'll, we'll accept the I'm caveats, not, but I'm not making predictions based on if penalties are going to happen. I want to see what it played true. out without. Oh, they took two more minutes. I don't care. The judges still evaluated them in this order. Just saying. All yeah. right. So Atlanta Quest, I thought it was an amazing bounce back year. After right. not making pre uh, making semis last season, they drew dead first. It's never a good time for whoever has that spot. Uh, did not play out play well for the play play out well god <laughs> <laughs> the battery had a really good run that timpani moment where he's doing like the pitch adjustments and stuff oh yeah just very very Super cool. cool very memorable moment obviously and um i would argue the battery pro i think tj might agree with this too the battery i think had their best run well, of the I season yeah, yeah, they had a really, really good run. I knew after the open and snare break, and then they do that like detail moment uh -huh. where it's like a full ensemble, and it stayed locked in. I was like, all right, they're gonna have a good show. This is, and they just stayed in there. They were in the zone. They they didn't AQ let the hype... base bump. The they, AQ base bump. Credit to maturity of players in the sense of sometimes you'll see groups start really well out of the gate, and it's almost like they surprise themselves, and they're like, oh god, we're playing really well. Don't screw up, and then they screw it up. Like, they yep. kept their cool the whole time, maintained the execution and clarity all the way through. Um, it was cool. It was very Be fun on to the watch. Be lookout for that, uh, for that in-season montage. Yeah, because I'm sure it's coming. They had a, some, some legit cameras on the floor that night uh, recording everything from their media team. So, yeah, great year for Atlanta Quest after a, a mediocre year the season before. A year that didn't pan out the way they wanted it to, obviously. Uh, Above them, Pow was 11th. Uh, I had Pow in 12th, which is, again, where they actually finished. Um, and you had Pow in 10th, so we were both pretty close on that one. Pow is, we made this joke. It's like the joke between, different, like, Pow is just, like, the benchmark. It's like, there's 10th place. They're always going to be really they're good. Always right they're always going to be in finals. It's like, right there. <laughs> right there. It's, uh, I'm sure you'll see a lot of those members in Pulse next year. Because I saw it's, people in Pulse that were in PAL last year. Uh, so, it is what it is. Good for them. Uh, just solid quality across the board. Let's see. Uh, then we had Matrix, which actually Matrix uh, without what their GMU? penalty. Oh, GMU and 10th. Yep. Uh, they definitely had the crowd on their side. Oh, yeah. GMU um, show was fun as hell. Definitely had the crowd, probably one of the crowd favorites, I would assume. Just probably, or at least from the crowd response. Just I would say them and Conexus, laughing, giving it up. Them um, and Conexus had great crowd response. Yep. Um, then we had Matrix, who was ninth. They would have been eighth without the penalty. I don't know what that penalty was for. Which means I got that one right too. Um, like I said, speaking of Matrix, they're just gonna be there. They're gonna yeah. find a way. They're gonna vi have great visual, vi great visual effect. Even if you don't think they're going to be there, they're going to be there. The hardest thing for me with that show was, like, hearing the front. Um, it was tough at times. Like, there would be parts where the marimbas were just, like, ramming notes. And I'm like, I can't hear this. Well, and, like, if I was sitting in a bad spot, I would be like, all right, this is where I'm sitting. But we were not sitting in a bad spot. There was – no, like I said, we were basically right behind Giff Howarth. Um, I looked over at you at one point, and – there was a moment where the props are down the 50, essentially. The batteries on the side, side two. two side of the floor. And the marimbas are out on the floor on side one. Marimbas and vibes, the front, front ensemble keyboards. The battery is ramming. You can see the front is ramming. I looked at you and I was like, how, how can we not hear the front right now? Like, what <laughs> yeah, it was is, tough. What is it happening? How is this possible? They're playing to their <laughs> eyeballs. Like, and so there was some weird stuff like that, but overall Matrix is, does what Matrix does. Great visual every year. The show makes sense. Sometimes they beat you over the head with it a little too much in terms of like, 
this is what our show is about. Like Fred Flintstone, here's my Billy, like my club, <laughs> hit you in the head with it. But that is what it is. Um, they're a staple of world. They do their thing, and it, and it does usually. I mean, you never well. don't understand what it's about. That's true. You always know what their <laughs> show's about. Um, yeah. So uh, they, they were, see here. We, we thought they'd be there, and they were there. So uh, Monarch is next. Yeah, Monarch was eighth. Yeah. Um, I was a little too high on them. It seems. Um, you were a little too low. Oh no, you would have gotten them right. You got them right in ninth. Yeah, without um, the penalty, so to speak. No, they didn't have a penalty. No, w- oh, well, Matrix if Matrix. It, all yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They would have been in ninth. So you technically got um, them right. Dude, the, the clarity and the, the approach to the instrument, the touch that they play the, with. The as touch a battery. is the key word there. The battery touch um, is the key word there for me. They also had probably one of the more memorable, rem- memorable, memorable front ensemble moments uh, for me. Uh, where they had that split keyboard part on the vibes, where they were doing the muffles with the the single mm-hmm. mallet in the hands, playing on the edges of the keys. Very cool. I was like, I was like, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Um, maybe, obviously, I'm not always in tune with that, but it was just very memorable to me, and I thought it was really cool. Yep, would agree. I was a fan of Monarch from the very beginning of the season, as you can see in my prediction on them being sixth. A little too high on them, and uh, we'll get to why, uh, how I was so wrong <laughs> on the sixth fifth place group excuse me in the end but we hit united on the head we we got united 100 percent right we, we both had them in seventh they ended up in seventh and that was one of those groups them and gmu again back to you're a top 10 group youtube channel we, <laughs> we hadn't seen like there were a couple like videos off to the side or like poor cell phone recordings of, of them like we had no idea like random reels or youtube shorts of united from weird angles i was like are they good are they not good i have no idea yeah so um we just said you know seventh the book seems hard is what it's it very is. beefy very beefy show they always play that east coast just play to their eyeballs just go for it and i, I, like, I appreciate uh, it i appreciate dude, the herit of uh, single five eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, eat it, with the left hand accent uh-huh. <laughs> i was like all right it was a staple of their show this year for sure but i i actually um the powers that be, I think, was their show name, right? Uh, I think that is right. Yeah, with the yeah, the powers. It was cool. Be. Those those great necklaces and stuff this, that the neck. I I gimmickly said like the Spider Man show with great response or great power comes great yeah. responsibility because I mean it's a famous quote from Spider Man. Yeah, uh, but no, I I enjoyed United uh, uniforms, eh. but <laughs> that is what it. I, I, that's half the groups. I'm not a fan of the uniform, or I guess now you call them costumes because they're not really uniforms anymore. The if costumes, we're being honest, man. it's but, more like theater with a uh, drumline. I don't know. Music dance, theater on the floor. Music with, theater on yeah, the floor. There's like dance elements now and all that stuff. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on to the hottest topic of the top ten, I would say, of the fact that Infinity ended up beating MCM. Now, before we get into talking about why that that happened or uh, infinity i don't even want to categorize them as a big miss for me because obviously you can see i have them in 10th there was a miss for evan too he had him in eighth and i didn't know they they were similar to united a little bit for me of i didn't know what to make of them i'd seen video clips from weird angles that sounded really good some that sounded really bad i didn't know like i made the statement before i thought their book was too hard and maybe again, they might have finished even higher if they had taken ten percent off the top. And that, but either way, they had a fifth place finish. Like credit, all credit to them and the members and the staff and the design team. But I, I put them in tenth in that like out of the traditional top five, like that six through ten group range. I didn't know what to do with them. I was like, I literally had no clue how good or not good or how clean or not clean they were. I knew I liked their show, and I liked their show even more after seeing it in person. But I had no clue how well they played going into Saturday, really. Uh, yeah, that show was just, man, that show was super clever. Um, just, it had like a bunch of, show. just like last show, just like the a, time show. It had a bunch of multi-layered visual ideas, um, just things that were really cool. Um, that whole idea with the bass drums where the visual cast member gets taken over by the prop and it dumps off the, the bass drum on the other side. I love that and moment. And then the that bass whole drums like, kind of do drill and then the bass drums come together visually and then the props come together visually too on the other side. Um, just things like that are they were super clever. 
and probably them, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, probably them and RCC and Rhythm X had the three most like memorable shows, like the ones I'm still thinking about today. Yep. Um, of independent world. And then I would also like, like I said, lump Ayala into that as well. But those three groups probably had the shows that, that I am just still like thinking about, which I think is the marks of a, a really strong product. Yeah. So here's the question then. I'll ask this question here. At what point, because Infinity got sixth last year, right? Is that right? No. No? Seventh? I think they were lower. Really? Uh, keep talking and I'll look it up. Yeah. So either way, obviously now we've had it. It's happened in the past. I think Matrix beat Rhythm X one year. Like 2017. 17. So it's happened before where one of your traditionally top five groups has been beaten. Obviously, Infinity had a hell of a show last year. They had a hell of a show this year. Um, I watched a few lot videos too, just to really take in how well they played. Because um, obviously, you can re- we could read it well on the floor at finals, but they played really well. The book difficulty, I'd say, is getting to the point where it's on par with what the rest of the top the, the top five are doing. At what point would we consider it a top six? Do they have to beat? They have well, to it's finish almost... at least six a few years in a row. Have well, like... So last year United was sixth, and this year and you, Infinity was seventh, and then this year you basically swap them. Um, well, Infinity jumped up to five, and yeah. United stayed in seventh. But it's almost become like a an after the break gap. Um, yeah, a little bit. Like a top. And what eight, I mean by almost. that is like there's eight, fifteen groups in finals. You go on the first eight go on fifteen through eight. And then they take a break, and then the top seven go on. Yeah, it, it's almost become like an after the break gap a little bit. So we've kind of stretched. So uh, for, out of just having like a top five tier, I would extend that. Then do we just have a top set? Do we just just talk about the big seven at this point? And you include United and, you, and Infinity because we've had two years in a row where the top I seven. Think it's inter- has I think it's I think it interchanges same. a little bit though because sometimes Matrix in six seven, um, and one of those other groups is kind of like shifted around. Yeah, but I mean, I do think that Infinity. I've said this last year. I thought that they should have been in fifth last year, yep. um, and obviously think... they were in fifth this year. So I mean, they're definitely up there in the conversation with the after the break groups. Like they could finish high. So. Yeah. Uh, at what point? I mean, yeah, I, I, I'm on board with like United's usually in the conversation. They have they're strong every year. Uh, Infinity's been really strong recently. You know, Matrix is in and out of that top seven conversation. Um, I was, just, I just wanted to, to pose the question of like, is there a point where it becomes? Because when when someone says the Big Five, you know exactly who you're talking about. You're gonna from year to year, you're gonna have some jumbling between that United Infinity, Matrix, GMU, Monarch, that like group of ensembles. But yeah. I feel like if there was a group that consistently was at least in sixth and you started to see, like, I think after prelims, the gap between like fifth and sixth was like multiple points in um, overall scores. I don't remember. I feel because uh, we were actually, talking about have, prelim scores big well, time. We'll, we'll, we'll look that up. I have a spreadsheet for that. <laughs> yeah. We have spreadsheets for everything. So I just, um, I just thought it would be an interesting conversation piece. Like, are we getting to a point where the, the, the activity is improving so much where it's not really just like your big four, your big five. In semis, there was a gap from six to seven, for sure. Like How big almost two, almost two points. So, what was the gap between fifth to six on prelims? Do you have that in front of you? No, but it's on that other tab. All right, hold on. Let's go ahead and just switch. So basically, as we said, we got over half of them wrong. The general area groups finished in, we got pretty right. Um, there were a handful we hit the nail on the head with, but it's a crapshoot. It's like an NCAA bracket. It's, it's even more, sub- it's basketball. There's no subjectivity minus outside of like one or two referee calls. This is even harder. Yeah. It's before we go, panels. before we go to that and continue that like top six talk or whatever. Um, uh, obviously there was MCM, um, their run, it sounded weird. It almost sounded like there was like a microphone left on at first. Yeah. We were talking about um, that. We were kind of looking around like, what is... No, it, sound, it just it sounded kind of peculiar. You you um, watch lot videos of MCM from that night. Sounds pretty good. You watch videos from a couple weeks ago. Sounds pretty good. I mean, their opening phrase after the sound effects stuff 
it was funny. I, I was in a position in my seat to see Evan and Chris Gary, who's also a Blue Coats elect snare, Blue Coats ex snare drum alum, uh, from the time that Evan marched and a little bit before that. All of our heads were, were having the same reaction. We were like, "Oh, oh no!" Uh, it was like we weren't saying anything, but you could see it in our like we were blinking a lot. Like, what is this? Is not something seems off. And then at a point in their performance, things really cleaned up a lot. So I don't know if they just came out cold or if there was some weird tech stuff. They left that reverb sound effect thing on right. for, for a few minutes of the show and it made the snare drums sound. Because the quads and basses sounded good most of the yeah. show. I mean, uh, and then you had Broken City who, um, I mean, when it's locked in, it's great. Oh, uh, yeah. But obviously, it's super, super demanding. Um, super exposed. I will say, when they came on, I started to like notice a trend that a lot of the quad lines were kind of hard to hear. Like the quads were just tuned real low. Um, yeah. Really, up until RCC and Pulse and X. You thought, like, you I, thought, I was going to say, lines. I heard X's quads just fine. Yeah, I couldn't hear the quads. Um, X, there was like, and obviously, this is very a battery centric read, but. I think I heard two small ticks in the entire show. I I can um, point two out. If I watch the video, there are two ticks that I heard. I know uh, one of them was in that like uh, call and response moment where the yep. snares did it. Like the fives. Yeah, um, the second group of singles the second the one. snares. The attack. And was... then there was like one other tiny one. But like other than that, I thought that they Pristine. freaking roped it. Pristine. Um, and then actually just the previous, I had my phone. When we were doing this, I had my phone pulled up to my ear because one of the uh, like snare drummers was posting uh, clips from Jeff Prospery's tape where he's like, this is the cleanest thing I've heard all night. <laughs> yeah, there's some pretty cool quotes from Prospery's um, uh, prelims uh, tape. Uh, but on, as an aside, I've told uh, some people they should take the D- Prospery tape and overlay it over like the finals run. Yeah, he said it's the cleanest thing he heard all night and just – the snares had a perfect run. That was prelims, which is kind of indicative of that score. Yep. Um, RCC, I thought the violin texture was sick. Um, it was awesome. The I, opening, the opening drum set, timpani drum moment, set, timpani slaps. moment. That's um, my favorite opening to any show f- from the entire year. And then like the rotating idea, they kind of slow the tempo down, and then they do that like group of cello rondo, and the prop starts rotating, and like the members just kind of feed off of it, and they dump off the props. Like that's just a very well crafted and well executed moment. Uh, from a visual design and visual effects standpoint, I was like, man, this is sick. Yeah. But yeah, and as you can see, we're back from the bathroom break now. But uh, <laughs> RCC, I've, I've liked the music package all year. I said it a minute ago. The timpani drum set opening is freaking incredible was cool and loved loved it every time i saw it i have to give credit to their snare line here they might be the most improved subsection from start to finish i'm not they weren't bad at the beginning of the season at all but i didn't expect the level of clarity they'd achieved at finals so good on them there were plenty of moments that sounded great from the snare line the quad line is phenomenal they quad line was good all year in my opinion uh, same with the baseline was solid. Uh, the snare line was cool. I really enjoyed it. Uh, the drum tuning was good. Kudos snare techs, whoever tuned them. The, they were they. Y- you can tell their snare line put in work. Go watch their first video from the year. I think with George Collins or Robert Martinez has it from like February or something. They they put. You can tell they put in work. So it was awesome. It was great to watch. F- enjoyable. Their show was really cool. Um, Obviously, I had we had X winning, but RCC almost jumped Pulse for the record. For those that didn't know, yeah, we'll talk R- about that here more. R- in a RCC second almost too. won, um, but I don't know if I would have agreed with that. But the top three was all great. I enjoyed Pulse. We'll talk about Pulse now, but I enjoyed RCC a lot. I loved X this year. Thought that, I thought X had the best battery across the board. If I'm being honest, maybe not the best baseline, but their baseline was still really good. Um, no, the best baseline would for sure be. Uh, it'd have to be settled out in the lot between yeah. um, Atlanta Quest, Atlanta Quest, and, and Pulse. Yeah, that's probably true. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that AQ but, baseline uh, live. If you didn't get a chance to see it, you missed out. They were yeah, man. phenomenal. All right, um, Pulse. Pulse is. I'll let you say this. What we said <laughs> as they were setting up on the floor, but it kind of just sums it up for you. Well, I was like 
talking to like our friend group and they were coming up and I was like, I know they're getting ready to play well. Like you just yeah. know it's going to happen. There's no question in there's your mind. There's never a question. You just know um, they're going to come out. It's like, there's no, like when X came out for their performance, I was like, obviously I'm a little more invested in wanting them to do well competitively, admittedly. And, but at the same time, you're like, I know that X's book was hard. I'm like, all right, they're going to do it. They're going to throw it down. Like I was pretty sure they were going to, and they did. But they did you, throw down. You did. You had the little bit of a question mark. You're like, it might not happen because of some of the risks they take, whatever. But Pulse just comes out, and you're like, you almost like a calm comes over you. You're just like, all right, cool. This is just going to be enjoyable. I'm going to hear some clean, clean beats, some really clean drill. It's going to be great. To me, I I kind of liken it to the same sensation I have watching. Uh, team Rennick ensembles like yeah. Paul and Sandy. Like you know, it's going to be great. They no have question. a system. They have the talent. They have like an established pipeline of like experience that feeds into them. It's like I just... said, I saw many members of Pulse this year in the battery, at least that were for sure in POW last year. So, so yeah, good on it, them. I mean, it was great. It was yep. It was super clean. Super um, clean. Yeah. That's all you really say about it. I mean, the shows work. They know how to operate in this world that's been built from an, from a judging standpoint to compete well on top of executing extremely well every year, year in and out. So it's just fun. It's fun to watch them do what they do. And I will say on the visual side of things, I meant to, we've said a few times we watch prelims at our respective houses in Kentucky on the flow stream. I watched Pulse. I watched Pulse Connexus X was the order they performed in in prelims. And I obviously am very invested as a snare drummer to listening to how the battery is playing and judging the ensembles like on that. I'm constantly trying to get myself to get out of that and take those blinders off. But at the end of the day, Pulse made me do that without even thinking about doing it. And what I mean is, God, they're visually clean. <laughs> I was sitting there watching the stream and, and I'm sitting there. I just go, wait a minute. I have to stop just listening. Use uh, it, They made me use my eyeballs. And my brain just went, that's so aesthetically pleasing. Like holding that perfect form across the floor. The fo Some follow the leader thing was going on or whatever. It's like they execute drill so well. And if they hadn't, X would have won prelims. Right. <laughs> because visual is why X didn't win prelims. Correct. But with that segue, let's move over to the... Uh, yeah, I, I want to start this. So we're going to break down some of these recaps, and I, we are not. Pardon the numbers. To argue, you're looking at a massive spreadsheet right now. Yeah, we're not listening. trying to argue that anyone didn't deserve what they got. Um, yeah, and I, I'm not necessarily even saying that I completely disagree with the judges, but what I am saying is I don't understand. Um, Correct. I would actually love. Anyone in the judging community who judges WGI, DCI, especially WGI, since that's what we're talking about, to just like reach out and I want to talk to them. Not necessarily on the podcast. Like if they want to do a podcast, great. But we'll I just want to understand because there's some stuff in here that I just don't understand. Even like reading through score sheets and the vocabulary that's on them, I don't understand. Yep. Um, so you made this spreadsheet, despite me being the data analyst by trade during the day. <laughs> uh, I'll let you kind of guide us through this, and I'll move us around the spreadsheet, comment where needed. But yeah, so this one, I just obviously in semifinals and finals, you get a breakdown of the ordinals and the scores one through fifteen, one through twenty. Uh, it's not always like that on the WGI website, just because they do two different rounds. Um, so what I did was I put them all in order. Um, based on their ordinals overall for all 31 groups. Um, if it's highlighted yellow, that means they won the caption. There are some ties because there were some duplicates. Like right off the bat, you can see there in Mascari's um, visual GE, go back to the left, go back to the left. Um, there was a tie for second between RCC and Pulse for his caption. They went on in different rounds. RCC was in the first round. Pulse was in the second round. Um, so if it's silver, that means they finished second in that caption. If it's orangish bronze, that means they finished third in that caption. And I was just kind of curious to see like where things panned out um, as far as the numbers and the ordinals. Uh, X ended up winning three of the captions in prelims. Um, they won music GE, visual GE, and the music caption. Um, 
And like you could say, oh, they went on on different rounds, blah, 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 which is true. But I think it is of note that them and Pulse went almost back to back. Like Pulse went, then Conexus went, then Rhythm X went. So yep. it's a pretty, it's a pretty close. They read. saw them right um, next to each other. So actually, like in like I was just listening a second ago, I said to Prosperi's tape, and he was like, obviously his number reflects that, as he had a point four spread between him and second. He said that's the cleanest thing I've heard all night. You guys are special. Um, direct, he literally that's said a that direct on his tape. Quote. That's a direct you, quote from the tape. You can go the to you can go to David Ware's um, Instagram. Well, by the time this releases, it won't be on there, but it's on his story. So. It is what it is. Um, it was on there. And then, so I just kind of wanted to see where everybody fell as far as their overall ordinal and where they were placed. Um, so, yeah. Let's see here. Any other scroll specifics over a little bit. you want to scroll over? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can kind of see, too, what I had done. I actually organized this spreadsheet also, I think, by subtotal. So you could see where Thesis was in 19th. Let me scroll down a bit. Uh, so, yeah, there's 19. And then below that, there should be like a 2020 for Dark Sky and uh, yep, and Red Wave. Which, yep. if it were me, um, like I said, that rule needs to change. I think it's silly. Like, whoever is in 20th, they should, they should just both get in. Or at least make the tiebreaker like the music. My, the music my caption. vote is they both get in. Yeah, just put them have twenty one in semis that year. So, but those two groups ended up tying for nineteenth with the thesis penalty, so they didn't have that. They didn't have an issue. Um, but yeah, I was just curious to see where things landed. All and, right, so uh, the, the I'll, next... I'll post this. I'll post yeah, this yeah. too. Um, it'll be on this. This one's too big for instagram nobody will be able to read it it'll be on facebook <laughs> so if you still use facebook nowadays we are on there go follow you'll be able to look at this yourself uh but the next thing we're going to look at is a little less of an assault on the eyes this is a little bit cleaner of a sheet in terms of it it's shows smaller. you the group's prelims breakdown semis and finals so you can see how things shifted between the two panels as well as we've highlighted in red things that just don't really make sense so, so zoom out just a touch here okay so obviously you can see i put the ordinal placements for each night the music ge prelims music ge semis music ge finals it's all there um if something is filled in in red like the box is filled in that means that those people judge the same caption but just kind of read the show different um and then, so that means that they had, like, a, a difference of four placements. Obviously, like, that Atlantic Quest, Visual GE, somebody had them in 12th, somebody had them in Visual GE 29th. Those people saw two completely different completely shows. Completely different shows. Um, I don't know how that happens, frankly. And if then, if it's circled in red, like, the boxes are outlined, those are the same judges that, from semis to finals, just read completely different shows. Um, I wanted to do it with a complete sub caption breakdown but it just the sheet was like too crazy that one at the top uh with x and rcc i just thought that was interesting that they completely flip-flopped i don't know uh, um from semis to finals hold the phone <laughs> x won music on semis Still? um it with that judge omar had them so omar had them in first and semis and uh so omar had them in first and semis and then gif had them third and semis and then they dropped them to third and seventh respectively which so some of those things don't don't make sense to me. Um, if you if you look at the sub captions, like Mystique from semis to finals, like let's see here, they were third four, third five, and, and then music? third yeah, seven, which, third what? seven. Are you talking and about music? music? Okay, and then X in semis was four one six three. And then seven three eight six, and I am not sure how you can play really poorly, but have a good com have a good composition box. If you're going to say somebody that plays really well can have a bad composition box, that's true. Because I also printed out the sheets of like what's what, and some of the things that kind of stood out to me. If you look at the subcaptions is 
some of these sub captions that dropped from night to night, but like composition doesn't talk about clarity a lot. There's one phrase in composition that talks about clarity, clarity of intent. And, and I would be, no I would make the argument stuff. and I would make the argument that like from semis to finals, no one's having a drastic drop in clarity of intent. No. Unless like they just completely horrifically shit the bed. Which at the in, in the top ten, it talks I'd a, probably, it, composition talks composition talks about orchestration, your elements of design, your range of content, variety, continuity. It talks That's about your clarity of intent. Semis to finals. And then it talks about your simultaneous responsibility. So most of those things don't change from show to show, not in a less than twenty four hour span. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So some of these things that like jumped around from like night to night, I'm just like, like Infinity went from fourth in comp to first in comp like over the night. Like I, like good for them for getting first one night, but they're probably like, well, you gave us first in comp and semis, so then we get fourth in comp the next night. Like how does that change when you're saying that we had a cleaner run or something? I'll, like I, I don't understand. I'll bring up something and that. Uh, again, Chris Gary, we spent a lot of time with it this weekend. We were talking about this when these recaps came out. I understand fully that the level of clarity a group executes with can affect the music effect boxes. Because sure. it's gonna it's just gonna make the music more readable. It's gonna make the intent come across clearer. Um, but I don't understand how clarity, like your performance level, your achievement level, is gonna affect comp more than a little bit. Like I get why it would affect it a little bit, but but if you're gonna like, say you, oh, if you're gonna I, say hold on, before I forget, and you even <laughs> Evan's getting into it. Um, I forgot where I was going. Just go ahead, dude. If you're gonna say that a group is eighth and sixth in music performance, then I don't really get how you're gonna get first and first in music effect. That's the that's where I was going. You read my mind literally. I was like, Cause "Isn't there an example of a group where the effect judges musically had them really freaking high, and somehow the music judges had them like in the middle?" Yeah, of the rhythm top. X. They won music effect, and actually in the music effect caption. So music effect is broken down into music effect and overall effect. Same way visual is broken down into visual effect, overall effect. Like it, they won the music effect box and actually had first first in those sub captions. But then you get like a seven, eight, six in like comps. I like and like I said, if clarity, those judges are just not reading the show the same way. They're they're not even agreeing with each other. Exactly, and let alone agreeing with themselves night to night. And it's, right. it's if if performance and clarity is going to affect comp, and you're going to try and tell me that oh well, their comps box dropped five places or four places because they had a dirtier run. Again, first off. The baseline of these finalist groups, their level of battery blend or ensemble blend for, on, a, on a higher level than that, is the baseline is going to be there. The number of ticks, ticked attacks, ticked first left double strokes, ticked attacks from the marimba line, like that's going to change. But the overall quality that the ensemble is putting out is not really going to change that much. And if you're going to say that's just a few more ticks – is going to affect their comp score that much. It better affect the music GE score that much, but we're seeing a discrepancy even in that. Yeah, and I'm I'm not saying like I'm not trying to call people out and saying they did a bad job, but I just I don't understand. Like use Monarch for example too, like and I I like to dive into the music box pretty heavily because I feel like it's probably one of the lesser subjective captions that there is. Like, music GE, visual GE is going to get real subjective. Yep. Um, even visual to a degree. But if on semis, you're going to give them 8th in comp and 11th in performance, and then the next night bump them from an 8 to a 4 and from an 11 to a 3. And I watched wait, wait, wait. both what those What went monarchs. from 11 to a 3? Which one comp or performance? Their performance. And I watched both those Monarch. So, like, if you were going to say, like, they just killed it finals night and had a crap semis run, I would agree. But watching them in person, I just don't agree. Like, look at this. Like, look at I don't think that they not, played terrible semis. If you're on YouTube, look at the spreadsheet right now. 
Monarch, you know, 20th in music. They went second overall, whatever. Call that a wash. Call that a wash, different panel. Same panel, semis night, 10th in music. Finals night, third. How? (laughs) Like, that's pretty wild. There is no, Uh, there is absolutely no way. They had a good run finals night. They had a clear, clean run. There were some ticks like everybody else had, but it was a good run, I thought. I mean, there's no way seven places, and and that's just as one. That, I mean, that's one judge, yeah, obviously. Well, two technically, and that um, that's well, overall score. Well, no, no, I didn't. I didn't average them. So like, one judge had them um, ten, seven, eight. Which oh, I see. You know, music one, music two. My bad. So one judge from night one to night two, semis to finals, thought that they were a little lower, and one judge thought they went up seven spots. And then the same thing with infinity. One judge thought they went five to six, a little bit lower, and one judge went thought they went seven to two so those are just two completely different uh, reads on the show which is fine like but some of this stuff just flat out doesn't make sense to me so and like another one uh who is it there you're looking at visual i mean i guess visual connexus might have had you could, i could see how like your drill might not have been locked in from night to night to go from 11 sure. to 6 uh from a clip from a visual standpoint but again your comps, your comp, there's a is there a comp in performance and visual just like music, right? Yeah. Your your visual comp is definitely not changing. Semifinals to finals night. So yes, the clarity of the drill, same argument. If you march it better, bit. it could increase the clarity of intent, which is on there. But a lot of those other descriptors, orchestration, those are not things that are gonna change that much. Here, here's another one. Music G E. Look at George Mason. George Mason was 15th in semis in Music GE from Music GE 1, jumped up to 9th. So and the other Music GE think, judge said they got worse. You would think, and look at that, the other GE judge, <laughs> yeah, Music so I was GE like, 2, I don't... had them in 7th semis night, moved them down. How does one judge go from 15 to 9, and the other one goes from 7 to 10? I mean, that's... And, and that's... I think at, that's... Look at the corresponding I, music scores, because we like we said... Music score performance wise should impact music GE for sure, based on how how well you played or performed your book. Uh, you had from this judge music two six to eleven. Uh, is that Matrix or GMU? That's Ma- GMU. That's, that's GMU. Six to eleven. Yet one of the music GE judges moved them down three spots. Yet one music judge moved them down. Da- uh, or sorry, reverse that. One music judge moved them up to nine up six spots and the music judge moved them down five spots how are your reads that different again we know this is subjective we know every one of these judges is extremely experienced but they all have their own training and background and performance history so so their ears are different their eyes are going to look for different things but still that's a big discrepancy i mean and like i said i'm not trying to call anybody out for what they're doing it but just doesn't I just, make sense. I don't understand. We, we are deductively and I study here. this a lot. <laughs> um, what else? So it, it's it's part of the reason why I signed up for that WGI grant. It's like I just want to go see what happens. Like I don't like I want to have a better understanding of this. Um, How, yeah, just a lot of stuff. <laughs> a lot of inconsistencies. Just it just it's just weird. There's got to be some level of, like, again, the shows aren't changing. The baseline of clarity across the board with all these finalists is not going to change. The number of ticks is going to be different. Maybe one group shits the bed. But I watched all of them. I wouldn't say anyone, like, dropped the ball. In terms of, like, that was way worse than their norm. Like, nobody. And so how do you have the same judge? And So let's talk about this real quick, too, before we close this out. The, the luck of the draw in terms of who the judges are to help your ensemble and how you design your shows to be more competitive. I mean, yeah. look at prelims. X won everything with visual. Visual They won visual GE, right? Just not visual? Or was visual GE the one they lost? Um, in what? What are you asking? Prelims night, X. Mm, no, they won visual GE. So it was the visual box. They got like fifth, I think, on prelims. So if they actually visual- won visual GE both prelims and semis. All right. So, and this is a direct quote from a tape. Yeah. So listen to this. I won't. One. I won't say what tape or what group or who yeah. it was, but 
on Simi's night, this judge said, this is the most sophisticated program I've ever seen. And then the next night during the same moment said, this is not a world-class moment. At the exact same uh, part of the show. What? You went from, this is the most sophisticated program I've ever seen on Friday to, I had a bad lunch or some crap on Saturday, and now this isn't a world-class moment. To te- First of all, to tell somebody who makes world-class finals that they don't have a bunch of world-class moments in the show a is a pretty statement. bold statement. It's a very bold um, statement. Uh, especially somebody who's in the top half. So, but like these, so that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not surprised that people don't agree with my opinions or don't agree with my takes. Like, oh, yeah. these people don't even agree with themselves from night to night. At least the, the panel that had semis and finals in some areas did not. Yeah, agree. yeah, they, yeah. They really. I'm speaking in hyperbole. I, I understand. Slightly. I understand. Slightly. But what I was getting at before was it. It just staffs are hanging by a thread before they announce the judging panels on who's got finals night. <laughs> and the fact that they can look at who the freaking judging panel is and go, well, this group's going to do well in this caption. This group's going to do well in this caption. Oh, we have a good chance of winning this year if you're one of those med- perennial or annual medalist ensembles. You're like, oh, we got a good shot this year. This judge is in this category. Like, it sh- I know that that's a perfect world. And you look at... There are probably combinations of judges, and if you look at the recaps and dig into them like we have, there are combinations of judges. If you flip these panels around and move around semis, prelims, those two two panels, there's a panel combination where X just win, wins flat out. There's a panel combination where RCC was just going to win flat out. It was almost finals night if the spread in a in a caption wasn't as big as it was. What caption had the two biggest spread prevent RCC from jumping them? Uh, music too. I mean, there's first and fourth. I mean, even if the spread's just a little smaller, they win. Yeah. So which, yeah. The whole which thing's even, wild. Even there's it's, even there's I, descriptors on the sub captions that say like, if you're like percentage points away, then you're saying there's significant difference from a group or definitive differences from a group. Here, um, basically, the, we don't want to beat a dead horse at this point. And but I'm not I, trying to burn the system down. Like, I'm sure if people no. could listen to this and, like, oh, they're trying to, like, drive a stake in WGI. It's like, no. no, I just want I want it to be as best as it can be. As consistent as possible. Put all the tapes out there. Release them. Make them transparent. That would be phenomenal <laughs> if all finals, prelims, and semis tapes were made available to the public. That'd be freaking phenomenal. But Stand by. Stand by uh, your, that would be a lot of pressure, so but stand by the, your comments. The only thing that I, I was thinking, and I said this quote a few times, this reference, as like the semis recaps came out, we saw what happened, you know, we're digging into them, having a beer with our friends, you know, the pr- finals recaps come out, we're looking at those, you know, Evan and I have been looking at them a, a day or two after uh, – finals but all i could think of the whole time looking at the inconsistencies we've highlighted or just the things that just don't just don't make sense like how reads could be so different for the same person night to night and i understand you dropping five places also has a little bit to do with how well groups below you might have done to jump you and and that night and i understand that i fully get that that's a way things can play out but all i could think of the whole time is the whose line is it anyway motto of, eh, well, the rules are made up and the points don't matter. That's WGI percussion. It's, Pretty much. It's, it's so subjective. We'll which, throw out numbers based on how we feel. It, it makes it makes our predictions just for fun, throwing darts at a board half the time. We should wait to do them. To, well, I won't even say that. Uh, we'll, we'll do them the same time every year from here on out. But it's just where the, where the rule – it feels sometimes like where the rules are made up and the points don't matter. I mean, it's not – and that's not, not even coming from a salty ex alum thinking no, 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 X no, no, should have no. won. I don't really think. I mean, I'm totally fine with Pulse winning. I would have been fine if RCC jumped. I'm totally jumped fine them. with the order as yeah. it is. Like totally I don't have any. Fine. I don't have any quarrel with that. There were um, all those all those top three medalists were phenomenal this year. I loved Pulse's show and performance. I loved RCCs. I loved X's. What I, obviously. Pulse alumni want to see Pulse win. X alumni want to see X win. RCC alumni, Broken City alumni. It just is what it is. Right. But yeah, totally. It's just. <laughs> yeah. I'd love that uh, Robert Martinez put on our uh, 
Instagram that one day. You guys are or Insta or YouTube. He's like, you guys are just a bunch of ex homers, aren't you? <laughs> and he he was like, messages us on the side. I was like, absolutely. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but no, it's, it's you can't not be sorry. It's I mean, the data is there though. Like, I mean, you can just look at it. I mean, I didn't I didn't put these scores down. Mm -mm. So. But and at the end of the day, again, uh, none of this is an attack on any of these judges. They're all credentialed to the nines. They're phenomenal. It's a at what hard they do. gig. It's, it's real a very tough. hard gig. But it's real tough. Like I said, it just doesn't make sense to me. So you can yep. message me and call me on the side or hit me up. That's fine. Enlighten me. I am totally willing to have those conversations and to listen. Um, but it doesn't make sense. Things don't add up, but either way, I had a blast this weekend. WGI Finals is always a good time. Even if, if you're an age out, or even if you never got to March and you just love this stuff, go. Go oh, yeah, one year. Killer. Save up money if you need to. If, if, you, if you need to wait a year, like find a way to go. Carpool, whatever. It's a blast. The environment is sick. The lot hype is just even so if you nasty. don't go inside, if you never buy, I've gone years past before we started doing this podcast yep. where I literally never set foot in the arena and just went and had fun, saw friends, watched amazing front ensembles, drum lines, full ensemble runs before finals. Highly recommend. We get into the nitty gritty because Evan and I are both bando nerds that just love this stuff and we, we, we want it to be evaluated pro as properly as possible and point this stuff out and that's where that comes from but at the end of the day we've loved I this think, stuff since we were like 14 i think conversation is healthy oh yeah like it's just like we're just we're just a couple of dudes sitting in our houses like talking about this stuff but like we're not we're gonna be making any <laughs> changes or no. proposals um although it would be dope if i won that wgi grant and got to go to <laughs> vegas um and just sit in here and and learn if and you hear what's picked, going on. If you get picked, and I, because I told you after I found out you submitted that, and I was like, oh, send me the link. And like, I'll just like th submit the same thing with my like resume of marching experience and whatever, so we can both go. I forgot to do it because I'm an idiot. I'm going to be sad. I'd be like, petition them. Oh, if they I announced that yet or not. I don't know when that happens. I got to find out. Uh, I, I am I sure the they will that. not pick me. But if they no. did, I did make a just reasoning why I should be selected. It was so. a pretty pretty convincing argument, not going to lie. So, But, uh, dude, uh, this season was a blast. What do we have, like six weeks till spring training? The spring, spring tra so tour doesn't <laughs> start till July 1st, right? Uh, no, no, no. I've seen – Well, it I might start later I think the first show's now. not till know. July 1st. I think I've they seen used to start earlier, but... send out their schedules, and I think it's July 1st. Um, I think that would mean spring training is going to be pushed back, which makes sense because high school kids had to like leave high school and fly back and forth. And like for the weekends of spring training, it was just whatever, but um, June 28th, so, first show Rockford, Michigan. There it is. So on top of that, um, in terms of other content, we're going to put out after this, which it's 11 15. I was hoping to have it out tomorrow on April 25th, Tuesday. It's going to be Wednesday. Uh, too late tonight to edit it and get it out. But after that, you know, we owe. Th we, I I feel like we owe thesis a reaction video. We were hoping a video would come out before finals, so we're gonna react to thesis. We're gonna react to United GMU. Um, I feel like there was a fourth independent world group, but either, for sure those three. There might be a fourth. We're gonna do some Scholastic World. We're gonna watch Dartmouth. We're gonna watch Ayala Vista Marietta. We're gonna watch um, uh, Chino Hills. Uh, the top five or six probably is Classic World. We'll watch. We'll do our open class videos. So over the next month, our goal is to get a lot of stuff out there. You know, Robert, George, uh, Alexander, just like uh, Calvin, five is one marching arts. Anybody else that takes videos, we appreciate all of it. And if I, for, I didn't mention your name. We appreciate you too. Uh, we're going to be taking advantage of your all stuff, watching marching it, analyzing vlogs, it. Alexander March, Nguyen. Oh, marching vlogs. How did I forget that? Yeah. Uh, uh, all awesome stuff. You guys were freaking putting in work. I saw a ton of you all with cameras and phones and, and recording equipment all over the place, uh, putting stuff out there for those that couldn't go. So thank you so much for all that. Go subscribe to all of their channels. Uh, if we pick, if we, if we use one of their videos, we always put them in the, um, video description. So again, uh, let's close this out. We've blabbered enough solid 90 minute wrap up, uh, 
Facebook, Instagram, hit the join button on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, do you still think we're dumb? Are you still mad when we predicted? Do you want to throw it in our face? We got your group wrong. I don't care. Send it to us on Instagram. Put the comment on YouTube. It's whatever. Hit the like button. Hit the dislike button. <laughs> Funny fact, the dislike button hitting that still helps us with the algorithm. So even if you're trying to hate on us, you're still helping us. Let uh, the hate flow. Yeah, right? It's, it just sparks <laughs> conversation. Uh, embrace it. We love it. Uh, we try to respond to as much as we can. Uh, and we will see everyone probably. This will go up. If you're watching this, be on the lookout for tons of reaction videos over the next month. Uh, it was a blast of a season, and we'll do it again next indoor season. Everyone, peace.